Welcome viewers to our deep dive into the world of ultrasonography. Welcome to our session on how to perform fetal biometry in the second and third trimesters, a practical guide. Understanding Fetal Biometry Fetal biometry involves using ultrasound to measure a baby's size and growth in the womb. Key measurements include the biparietal diameter, head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length. These metrics are vital for healthcare professionals to assess fetal growth rates and detect potential developmental issues. Essential first step. Before we proceed with how to perform fetal biometry, it's imperative to establish a reliable gestational age. Why it matters? Accurate dating is the cornerstone for evaluating fetal growth. It ensures that our biometric measurements are assessed within the correct developmental context, crucial for identifying if the fetus is developing healthily. One practical example. Imagine a scenario where a fetus is measured, with a weight of 3,000 grams, and biometry places the gestation at 37 weeks. However, if accurate early ultrasound dating instead indicates that the pregnancy is only 34 weeks along, this suggests that the fetus is larger than average for its age. This requires further evaluation and careful monitoring due to potential delivery complications and underlying health issues such as gestational diabetes. Thus, it's evident that even the most precise fetal biometry is ineffective if it's not accurately matched with the confirmed gestational age and correctly represented on the growth chart. Having covered the essentials, let's now focus on the practical application of fetal biometry. Time to sharpen your skills for accurate fetal assessments. Biparietal Diameter Positioning the probe, place the probe transversely on the mother's abdomen, aligned with the fetal head. The goal is to achieve a cross-sectional view of the head. Image plane, ensure the ultrasound plane passes through the thalami and cavum septi pellucidi. The falc cerebri should be visible, dividing the cerebral hemispheres symmetrically. Key landmarks. Thalami, visible and symmetrically positioned in the center of the head, these indicate the proper level for measurement. Cavum septi pellucidi, this small fluid space between the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles must be clear and centered. Falk cerebri, this bright echogenic structure should appear as a straight line dividing the cerebral hemispheres symmetrically, indicating a true midline sagittal plane. Skull, the outer edge of the skull should be well defined, ensuring that the measurement is taken at the widest point. Measurement technique. Caliper placement. Position calipers on the outer edge of the near skull wall to the inner edge of the far skull wall. This outer-to-inner methodology ensures that the measurement includes the full width of the skull, capturing its maximum diameter, which is crucial for accurate BPD assessment. Tips Make sure that the head is not tilted and the image plane is truly transverse, as this can affect the symmetry of the falcs and the shape of the skull. Avoid tilting or angling the probe too much, as it can elongate the head shape and lead to inaccurate measurements. Head Circumference Positioning the probe, similar to BPD, the probe should be placed transversely but may need slight adjustments to encompass the entire head circumference. Image Plane The measurement should be taken at the same level as BPD, ensuring that the ellipse is placed on the outer edge of the skull. Key Landmarks Outer Skull Edge Complete visualization around the perimeter of the skull ensures that the measurement includes all relevant bony structures. Midline Echo Like the BPD, the Falk cerebri should appear as a continuous line, which confirms a true mid-sagittal plane. Cerebral Hemispheres Both hemispheres should appear symmetrically on either side of the Falk cerebri, confirming the probe is correctly aligned. Measurement Technique Caliper Placement Place the calipers on the outer edge of the skull, tracing around the perimeter of the head to measure the maximum circumference. This should be done at the same level as the BPD but adjusted to capture the entire head circumference. Tips The caliper should trace the outer perimeter of the head, not just the bony skull, 
to include the soft tissue mantle which is standard in HC measurements. Consistency in plane. The plane used for HC should be consistent with that used for BPD to ensure accuracy. Abdominal circumference. Positioning the probe, place the probe transversely across the mother's abdomen, focusing on the fetus's abdominal area. Your goal is to center the abdomen on the ultrasound screen. Image plane. Carefully adjust the probe to obtain a true transverse section of the fetal abdomen at the level of the stomach and portal vein. The ideal plane for AC measurement includes a visual of the stomach, positioned on the left side of the image, and the portal sinus of the umbilical vein, which forms the hockey stick appearance. Key Landmarks Stomach should be clearly visible, containing some fluid to better define the abdominal contour. The presence of fluid helps confirm that the scan plane is horizontal and centered correctly. Portal vein, look for the portal sinus in the umbilical segment of the left portal vein, which forms a distinctive hockey stick or J-shape appearance. This is crucial for ensuring the measurement is taken at the proper transverse level of the abdomen. Typically, kidneys, ribs, and lungs should not be visible in the AC measurement plane, their presence usually suggests the plane is too high, too low, or not properly centered. Measurement Technique Caliper Placement Encircle the entire abdomen, placing calipers at the skin line to include the maximum abdominal circumference. Tips Consistent Pressure Apply consistent, mild pressure with the probe to avoid compressing the fetal abdomen, which can lead to underestimation of the abdominal circumference. Avoid oblique angles, it's crucial to maintain the probe perpendicular to the fetal spine to prevent oblique cuts that can falsely increase or decrease the AC measurement. Femur length. Positioning the probe, place the probe longitudinally along the mother's thigh line, targeting the fetus's femur. Your goal is to visualize the entire length of the femur from one end to the other. Image plane, adjust the probe to obtain a straight, longitudinal view of the femur. The ideal plane for FL measurement ensures that the femur is fully extended and appears as the longest continuous line possible within the ultrasound image. Confirm that both the proximal and distal ends of the femur are clearly visible. Key Landmarks Femur shaft, the entire shaft should be visible without any bending or foreshortening, ensuring the measurement is as accurate as possible. Proximal and distal ends, these should be well-defined but not included in the measurement to maintain focus on the osseous length. Surrounding soft tissues, should be minimal in the imaging plane to avoid any confusion with the bony structure. Measurement Technique Caliper Placement, position calipers at the ends of the ossified shaft of the femur, excluding the cartilaginous ends. Tips Angle of insonation, ensure the ultrasound beam is as parallel as possible to the femur to minimize angular error and avoid foreshortening. Avoid movement, try to perform the measurement when the fetus is calm and not moving, as motion can blur the image or cause repositioning of the femur. Clear visualization, adjust the gain and focus if necessary to clearly define the bone edges, ensuring the measurement is precise. Dive into the captivating world of ultrasonography in just a few seconds. Hit subscribe and boost your ultrasonography expertise.